of all game. Public enemies who tried to destroy our America. <laughs> Faithful Ballot Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric, and with me today is the Green Hornet, and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. <laughs> If you're interested in the Green Hornet Cigar, the Killer Bee, or any other by, by Blackwork Studio or Black Label Trading Company, check us out at oaklandtobacconist.com. So, we have a very special cigar review today, uh, and joining me is the Green Hornet himself in person to smoke this stick. However, before we get to talking about that cigar, we have to talk about another one, and that is the Killer Bee uh, production by Blackwork Studio. Now, Blackwork Studio uh, is a part of Oveja Negra Brands, and Oveja Negra translates to Black Sheep. Now, within that, you have the Killer Bee that has this twist of tobacco on the top uh, of the, the head of the cigar. It is a short Robusto stick, more like a petite Corona. The fillers and binder Nicaraguan, and the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Maduro. Killer Bee has a medium to full in body, uh, f and it's flavor-wise, you're going to expect in something like the Killer Bee is going to be cedar, it's going to be cocoa, espresso bean, and it's going to have a lot of that rich, dark, like earthy tones to it. And that's what you're going to find Killer Bee. How about the Green Hornet? Well, the Green Hornet is a Killer Bee. But okay. the difference is that at the head and the foot, there's a small twist of Candela tobacco. Now, Candela is a green tobacco, and it brings with it its own special taste. Uh, it can add uh, creaminess or earthy or grainy taste to it. Now, you're Obviously, you're going to smoke this end, but you're not going to get to light this part. It seems to me that to punch this rather than cut it would leave the candela on, which means you're going to have more of it in your mouth. So it's just a thought when you go to light this cigar. Well, and originally when Green Hornet started, it was an event-only stick, as I understand. And this is very special. Not only is it limited, but it's only rolled by two rollers in Esteli that create this cigar. Out of popularity, it became a part of the portfolio that you see in Blackwork Studio. I also love, as you mentioned, the candela. you got the top and the foot right here. I love the closed foot tradition. You don't have to toast the cigar. You can go directly into lighting it, and you'll get that candela taste, kind of what you were speaking to. Well, Green Hornet, I am uh, very interested in doing a review of this cigar. Are you ready to light it up? I would love to light it up, but I've had this cigar so many times and I love it. I'm going to give a good friend of mine a chance to smoke it instead of me. Oh, okay. So let me just step away and I'll send him in. All right. Well, I suppose then we'll have a very honest review for having someone smoking the cigar for the first time other than... Uh, the Green Hornet himself smoking this stick. But I'm very excited to have this 5x48 stick, Candela Foot. Hello, hello, Steve. Well, hi, Eric. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. I'm really happy that the Green Hornet called me this morning, oh. although it's kind of early. It, it is early and cold. <laughs> and cold up here. It's My very cold. goodness. <laughs> well, and I don't know if you've smoked this stick before, but we were going to light up the Green Hornet. I have smoked that stick before, but, but Green Hornet tells me that compared to him, I'm like an, a, a, just a novice at smoking oh, this. okay. So I do like it, and I'm looking forward to getting into it again. Awesome. You have very interesting riding gloves there. Oh, very, well, thank very you. Very interesting thank color there. Yeah, they're, uh, they're green. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I assume it's because of the Hurley Irish in you? No, it is. Oh, this okay. is my St. Patrick's Day outfit. Oh, okay. I'm wearing, okay. It, I'm wearing it early, which, of course, rhymes with Hurley. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> Time to light it up. So, um... As we've kind of mentioned, this is a uh, short Robusto, Candela. Here's a cutter for you. Thank you. No, and I, I know the Green Hornet would prefer us to punch this, but we're going to cut it. I'm sorry, please. Oh, yeah. No, well, and actually, if you cut it just right, you can still save a lot of that Candela stripe on the top. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm a big fan of, as I had said before, closed foot 
Instead of toasting the cigar, we're gonna jump immediately into lighting it and trying to get that flavor of candela right off the beginning. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. A lot of flavor. What right a, yeah, a lot of flavor and a lot of smoke. Yes, yes, smokestack. I always, when dealing with a closed foot, sometimes when you take that initial puff, you're like, oh, the draw's a little tight, and then it immediately opens up. Oh, oh, absolutely. I have to leave my glove off of this so I can absorb some of the flavor through my hand. <laughs> Um, but it seems like you have been uh, pulled towards the Green Hornet cigar. Yeah, actually I have. Uh, and, and initially it was just because the name was so great. Um, but like a lot of things I, I, in my life, um, I like what I would call oddball things. Uh, orphan cars and and uh, and cigars that that just have something different about them. Mm. Uh, like this Liga Zebra, which is another one of my favorites, just because I mean, I like a barber pole, and that one's a particularly really good one. Uh, so that's what really brought me to this. But then once I got into it, it was like, oh, man, I can't get enough of these. And it's tough to not be smoking them all the time. <laughs> Definitely. Because, because I like to smoke. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I smoke around. <laughs> so. Well, and, and the thing I really enjoy, kind of at the beginning when we get this light up, you have this, like, cooling like tobacco sensation with that candela. You have that richness of that like dark cocoa-y from the Maduro itself. It's just, it's a winning combination. And then on the, on the flip side is you get a transition when it starts to burn past that candela on the foot, then you get into the Maduro wrapper. And it's just, it's a great journey. It has a cigar that tells a story at the same time, which I enjoy. What do you more often than not gravitate? More often than not, it's, it's, it's to a stronger cigar. Okay. Um, I've, I've had some, uh, mild things that I like uh, that have been good, but I think it's because they had an extra lot of flavor in them mm. uh, that, that uh, overcame the fact that there that it was not a lot of strength. Right. Uh, but I'm, medi I'm medium to full body, yeah. Okay. This is a 48, but I like the concentration of wrapper to filler and binder. Mm -hmm. So we are going to continue to smoke on this as we are in the first third, and we will be right back as we get into the second third. Okay, so here we are, second, third, still sort of a smokestack, a lot of smoke produced. We had to set it down, unfortunately, for a little bit, and so we actually purged the cigar to get it relit, which, have you done that before? I had not done that before. And so the concept is basically when you, just as if you were going to light up the cigar and you're starting to puff on it, will you blow out while the flame is on the foot of the cigar and that will purge some of the ashy bitterness from the cigar itself. And it worked really, really well because when I relit it, it was like, oh, no, oh, it wasn't the, <laughs> it wasn't the fault of the cigar. It was the fact that it's been sitting. So, mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm getting creaminess. Yeah, there's a creamy sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of that like cocoa sensation as well. Um, now I know that you're more of a veteran smoker than I am and so I'm trying to catch up. Right oh, now, <laughs> that's a, such a nice way of saying I smoke too fast. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like really well constructed. I like the resistance on the draw. Mm -hmm. It's not too tight, not too open, um, and the transition and flavor. You said that creaminess, the sweetness, um, and any of those like beginning maybe uh, when we transition from candela to Maduro and that that transition of a little bit of pepper spice. It's really starting to die down to like a really like like flavorful sweet cigar yeah it is it's 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 so nice as i say smoke output is great so i know that you are a fan of this you've also tried the killer bee as well i have tried the killer bee but i think i've only had it once oh okay uh and it's hard not to come back to this yeah yeah uh but i, I would sometime i would like to smoke the two of them side by side right right just to see uh the difference that i'm that i'm that i can taste yeah no definitely okay. and see kind of the inflections um, and also the the killer bee, I believe, is a close foot, but it's not candela foot like this. So mm. you ha don't have that transition like this as well. Mm -hmm. So that is the assessment so far on this second third. We will be right back in the final third. We're back. Well, here we are in the final third. Third. I'm just about to yeah the third third. And I'm just about to take off the um, label here. I know that you kind of got your to yours first. Like I said, I need to catch up. Um, but thoughts on kind of as the close of this cigar, what would you say strength level, overall impressions? Oh, I'd still think it's, it's definitely in the uh, 
middle middle to to a little bit stronger yeah yeah mm -hmm. um, but it I'm, I'm getting I'm definitely feeling it on the tip of my tongue which I know is where my sweet taste buds are right so I'm, I don't know what the sweetness is but I'm still getting it there so that's yes. nice and I mean I guess you're coming down to the end too so you have more of that candela like ratio closing yeah. a little bit with the yeah. twist on the cap um, still smokes really, really well. I like the smoke output. I like the burn as well. Um, and just, it's also not becoming bitter towards the end, which no, I really not. enjoy. It is not, and that's, that's, a, that's a plus, a big plus. Yes. So really, really great stick. If you haven't tried Killer Bee or Green Hornet, I highly recommend it. Uh, and I'm sure Steve does as well. It's one of his favorite sticks. I do. And it's also one of the Green Hornet's favorite as well. I understand. Yes, he says it is. Oh, okay. So he's nodding okay. in the window here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Steve, for joining us here on the channel. And, of course, thank the Green Hornet for me. I will. I will. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right, Eric. <laughs> and uh, check us out at oaklandtobacconist.com if you're interested in any of these cigars. Once again, I'm Eric, and thank you for smoking with us here on Oakland Tobacconist. <laughs> Hello, listeners. This is the Green Hornet speaking to you from my secret headquarters inside a warehouse in an unnamed big city to thank Eric for welcoming me into the Oakland Tobacconist community and to thank each of you for watching OGT's latest video. I'll let you in on a little secret. The Green Hornet has a civilian identity. He's really Britt Reed, publisher of the Daily Sentinel, a crusading newspaper in a large city. As a bonus for those of you who stuck around for this part of our show, I'd like to offer you a free Green Hornet cigar. Well, one of you. The first one to tell Eric what the connection is between this bird, which is not the Maltese Falcon, and Britt Reed's secretary will be the winner. There is no deadline for this contest, but if I were you, I'd hurry. I see Cato is calling me to the Black Beauty for another adventure. The Green Hornet is still at large. <laughs>